Hi folks, we're continuing with some chapter 4 problems. Here's number 19. Bob pushes on a baby carriage with a force of 120 newtons at an angle of 40 degrees below horizontal. The carriage and the baby have a combined mass of 43 kilograms and the carriage is moving forward at a constant velocity. What's the coefficient of friction between the wheels and the level ground? So here goes. We have a baby carriage and we draw a lot of things as boxes and that just jumped in a weird and wacky way. Sorry about that. Um, so we're going to start here again. Here's our baby carriage um, and I'm going to move that. Sorry again. I'm having, I'm having drawing problems. Happens to the best of us, doesn't it? All right. Here we're going to push on this baby carriage and the angle is 40 degrees below horizontal. So this is my angle right here. Um, at 120 newtons um, and the baby and the carriage have a combined mass of 43 kilograms um, and we want to know what's the coefficient of friction between the wheels and the ground and we know it's moving at a constant velocity. So let's draw all the forces acting on this object. We have gravity going down there is a normal force. Those wheels on that carriage are pushing it up with a normal force. The only force applied is caused by this fraction or a sum of this baby carriage here, but there is a frictional force pushing it back, opposing the motion. And since this force is at an angle, we're going to have to find the components of that. So I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to move it up here so where I've got a little bit more room. So I have got a 40 degree angle. This is at 120 newtons. I'm going to have a force parallel to the motion and I'm going to have a force perpendicular to the motion. Force parallel, this is next to that angle. So this is going to be 120 newtons times the cosine of 40 degrees. And the force perpendicular is going to be 120 newtons. This is the opposite side, not touching that angle. So it's times the sine of 40 degrees. I'm going to grab my calculator and find those two. So 40 cosine times 120. This ends up being 91.9 newtons is force parallel and then force perpendicular is going to be 40 sine times 120 and this is going to be 77.1 newtons. I'll put a bubble around those two so I can find them. Okay, next step I am going to sum the forces horizontal and I am going to sum the forces vertically. Now Newton said you only have two choices. Everything's going to equal zero or ma. Vertically up and down it's not flying through the air or sinking in the dirt so some of the forces vertically are going to be zero. And we're told the baby carriage is moving at a constant velocity. Constant velocity means some of the forces on the object equals zero. So horizontally, what are the forces acting on my carriage? So let's take a look at these. Horizontally, what forces do I have? I have friction and I have the component of the parallel force, this parallel force right there. Vertically, I have normal and I have the component of the force perpendicular and I have force of gravity. So I have three components of my vertical force. So my vertical force, my forces up, are going to be normal force is up. My two down forces are going to be the force perpendicular, because this person is pushing down on that baby carriage, force perpendicular plus the force of gravity. But the ups are going to equal the two downs. Horizontally, the force forward, which is going to be this fraction of the push and person pushing the baby carriage, force parallel will be equal to the force of friction. Now we can put our numbers in. Force parallel is 91.9 newtons. Force of friction is mu times normal force. And mu is the big unknown. That's what we're solving for. We don't know normal force, but we can go to the other side to find it. Normal force will be equal to force perpendicular, which we know up here, 77 
0.1 newtons plus force of gravity, which is mass times acceleration of gravity. And we're told that the baby in the carriage is 43 kilograms. So let's pull this down. So normal force is going to be 77.1 newtons. The baby carriage is 43, oops, that should be a plus sign, 43 kilograms pull times 9.8 meters per second squared. So normal force will be equal to, let's see, 43 times 9.8 plus 77.1. I end up with, when I round it off to three sig figs, 499 newtons is what I get for normal force. That's not my, the answer, but it's important. And I'm going to put a bubble around it, and then I can plug it back in here. So 91.9 newtons equals mu times 499 newtons, or mu will be equal to 91.9 newtons divided by 499 newtons. Let's do that division. 91.9 divided by 499. I get a coefficient of friction of 0.184, and that is a logical number for coefficient of friction, and that is number 19. Here goes, let's look at the next one, number 21. A sleigh or sled is carrying a couple of children is pulled along on a snowy path. The coefficient of friction between the sled and the path is 0.1. So let's take a look and let's draw that. So we have a little sled. We've got some cute little children. Let's give them some little heads. That's always handy. And some little snow caps. We get some cute little kids. Yoop. Yoop. Little snow hats. And there is a rope that's attached to the front of the sled, the coefficient of friction between the sleigh and the runners is 0.1. A rope is attached to the front of the sled. It makes an angle of 65 degrees above the horizontal. The tension in the rope is 540 newtons, and the sleigh is accelerated at 0 0.340 meters per second squared forward. What is the mass of the child children? and the sleigh. Okay, just like we did last time, what are we going to do? We are going to draw all the forces acting on this situation. So, force of gravity down. What goes up? Normal goes up. Force applied, well the only thing applying a force is going to be this rope, and we'll deal with the rope in a second. And what opposes motion? Gravity opposes, mo or excuse me, friction opposes motion. I'm going to take the tension in the rope. I'm going to break this into components. This is going to be the force parallel to the surface. This is the force perpendicular to the surface. Now, my force parallel is going to be 540 newtons. This is the adjacent side, so times the cosine of 65. And the force perpendicular is 540 newtons times the, it's the opposite side, so it's times the sine of 65 degrees. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and solve for those. So force parallel is 540 times, I'm going to do this in the right way, every calculator is a little different, 65 cosine times 540. This gives me 228 newtons for force parallel. And force perpendicular then is going to be 65 sine times 540. Force perpendicular is 489 newtons. Put a bubble around that. All right, now we're going to sum the forces horizontally, and we're going to sum the forces vertically. When we sum the forces horizontally, are they going to equal 0 or ma? Well, it says that this thing is accelerated forward, so it will, the sum of the forces horizontally are going to equal ma. And vertically, there's no mention of the kids falling through the snow or rising through the air, so those are going to be equal to 0. So horizontally, what is my horizontal forces? That's a horizontal force, and that's a horizontal force. What are my up and down forces? Normal's an up and down force, gravity's an up and down force, and perpendicular's an up and down force. So now that I've got them identified, horizontal, I have got force parallel minus force of friction. Why is it minus? It's in the opposite direction. It's going to make the mass accelerate. 
vertically, my ups, force normal, plus force perpendicular, because that's pulling up on the rope, are going to equal to the force of gravity. Okay, let's pull this down a little bit so I have a little more room to move, but I want to, don't want to lose too much of my numbers here. Okay, force parallel, 228 newtons, minus friction, which is mu times normal, is going to make my mass, which is my unknown, accelerate at 0.34 meters per second squared. Uh, we don't know normal either, so what are we going to have to do? Other side. So over on this side, normal force plus force perpendicular, force perpendicular is 489 right at the top of the page, plus force of gravity, and gravity is mass times acceleration of gravity. So force of normal is going to be equal to, that should be an equal sign. Mary, see, that's an equal sign, that's an equal sign. So force normal will be mass times the acceleration of gravity minus 489 newtons. I am going to take this, all of that, and I'm going to put it in for normal. Yes, this is trickier, isn't it? So here goes, 228 newtons minus mu. Do I know my mu? I do. Mu is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 times the big kahuna mass times acceleration of gravity we know is 9.8 meters per second squared minus 489 newtons. E and then close that big parentheses equals mass times 0 0.34 meters per second squared. Now it's just algebra, but boy howdy, we got to do this algebra. Okay, 228 newtons minus, I'm going to distribute the 0.1 times through all of this. So here goes, 0.1 times all of this is going to be mass times 0.98 meters per second squared. See this negative sign? goes with that, so I'm going to take that negative through there. Negative 0.1 times a negative 489 is going to give me a positive 48.9 newtons equals mass times 0.34 meters per second squared. I've got to get all my m's together, positive m's, negative m's, so I'm going to add mass times 0.98 meters per second squared to both sides. I'm adding it. All right, so these are going to cancel. I'm going to end up with 228 newtons plus 48.9 newtons equals I'm going to add these two together over here. This is going to be mass times 1.32 meters per second squared. And these two, when you add them up, ends up being uh, 207, well, let me grab my calculator. I don't trust my brain. 228 plus 48.9, 277 newtons is mass times 132 meters per second squared. Divide to find mass, so mass is going to be 277 divided by 1.32 newtons divided by meters per second squared, and I end up with a mass of 210 kilograms. This one was a good one. It's good for your brain. All right, we will see you later. Bye-bye.